Hi, I'm Chris Bradshaw from Hexagon. During this video, now that our heat exchanger model is complete, we will run the heat exchanger analysis. We'll take a look at the output, including specifically reviewing the tube sheet analysis report. Any issues that are identified during that report, we'll take steps in the input to resolve. All right, so let's run the analysis now that a heat exchanger is complete. Go to the ribbon, hit the running man to run the analysis. And the calculations run and the analysis is now complete. And once the analysis is complete, we now see the output processor. So we have a few reports listed in orange. The warnings and error report is just orange to tell us that PV Elite is doing all the calculations internally in Imperial units to remain compliant with the ASME code. So that's that's fine, that's just a warning for our information. We also see warnings on the flanges as well. Both flanges are shown in orange. But the warning here is, as you can see, this warning should not be considered for standard flanges, which ours is. And we see the same warning on both of the flanges. So we don't need to worry about this warning. We don't need to consider it because we're using standard flanges as permitted by ASME 8 in table U3. We see the same warning, by the way, the external pressure calculation report is also shown orange, and that's for the exact same reason, warnings related to the flanges. So again, we don't need to consider that because we're using standard flanges. However, what is a problem is the tube sheet calculation, which is in red. This is the ASME tube sheet calculation. And if we scroll down, as we see, we see the various different calculations for the selected load case. However, all of those 16 load cases that I mentioned are actually run. The design and operating in the corroded and uncorroded case, and we see the summary table for all of those load cases at the bottom. The detail just above is just for the selected load case, which we had this one here, the uncorroded, max pressure shell side and max pressure tube side. So that's the one we see all of the detail for. And then we see the summary. And down here we see the tube, shell and channel stress summary. And on here we see some issues here in the uncorroded operating and the corroded operating cases. They all fail. So if you look a little bit in more detail at the max ratio column, well, the, this one is okay. The max ratio is 0.32, 32.5%. This is an issue. 123% but this one and this one are not issues. So this is the tube stress in tension. So that's okay. This is tube stress in compression. That's where we have an issue. The tube loading, that's okay. And the shell stress is also okay. So our only problem is the tubes in compression. And as you can see, the worst of those is uh, this one here in the corroded case, operating two in the corroded case, but all of the operating cases fail. This of course being due to the um, thermal expansion differential between the tubes and the shell. They're expanding at different rates, of course they're different materials, and of course different temperatures. So we have an issue with compression, we have uh, buckling problems essentially with our tubes. So to counteract that uh, differential thermal expansion, we're going to make a slight alteration on the tube sheet, which will be to add um, I'm going to close the output, go back to the input, we're going to add an expansion joint onto the tube sheet to absorb that um, thermal expansion. So all that needs to be done here is if we double click on the tube sheet and then we can change in the tube sheet input change to a either a thin or a thick type bellows. I'm going to pick a thick type here. Once I've made that change here to add an expansion joint on the expansion joint data page, that this is now enabled and I can fill in the information. So I'm going to put this round about in the middle, 1.4 meters along the shell. You can choose to either analyze or specify an existing tube sheet. For this example, I'm going to pick existing. Uh, requires a little bit less uh, in terms of the input. And I'm just going to specify the joint OD and ID, which will be 750 mil 
and 762 mil with a 6 mil wall thickness a 1 mil corrosion allowance and with the knuckle as you can see there's a sketch here to help with the input the knuckle offset on the inside and the outside FA and FB here and here will be 25 mil for both of them and the knuckle radius itself will be 40 mil again on both sides A and B the shell the cylinder is 2.8 meters and let's rate this for 8,000 cycles and for this I'm going to manually specify a spring rate here in the user field so I'm just going to specify 2000 Newton per millimeter for the spring rate okay and that's all the input that I need here for this particular expansion joint on this heat exchanger so when I click OK here I see here's my thick expansion joint and all that's left to do is rerun the analysis so again hit the running man again the calculations will run you see the process and the status the analysis is now complete and we're once again presented with the output window we again see the warnings and errors in the orange reports they're exactly the same as we saw before but the tube sheet calculation is now no longer shown in red and if I scroll down past all the detail just going straight to the summary here in this video example here I can see the results for the 14 load cases that were run no issues here no issues on the shell membrane stress summary and of course this is where we had the issue the tube channel and shell stress summary no longer in red no issues and this issue that we did have is now 0.374 instead of 1.2 so we've resolved our issue so of course the next thing to do would be to generate our report that will be exactly the same process as we saw in the previous video so I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful but remember if you do have any questions at all please don't hesitate to reach out to us at Hexagon Thanks for watching.